Okay. Um, and Faith, was there, um, should I just zoom in? Is that what you want? Is that how it should be presented? Sure. Um, not that we have to read all these words, but this just identifies what our conversation is about, which is um, intro to photography. And we will be recording this and using the recording on the gallery website. Okay, just letting Emily in. <clears throat> Hi, Emily. Hi, I just wanted to say hello. As I said to Faith, I have a, another meeting that's scheduled for right now and I was racing back, but I loved the images. Um, I, I looked through the PowerPoint, it's beautiful. So, congrats well, thank you. Thanks for viewing it and um, spending a, a few minutes with us just to uh, communicate uh, how you felt about the work. Oh, it was great. How are you all doing? Yeah, you hanging in there? <laughs> Do you enjoy the process? Yeah. No, really, you 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 elicited fine work from them. Really high quality work. Thank, Thank you. you. They were they were really great, and I, I'm not just saying that. These guys have stuck with it, um, and it hasn't been easy. And there's been all kinds of uh, reasons to possibly not continue with the. Uh, the level of intensity and the quality of work, um, but they've stuck through it and, I, and I'm really happy with the work that they've created too. Well, as I said to Faith, I just wanted to stop in and say hello. I spent some time looking at the images, but I will let you go on with your conversation and thank you so much. Thanks for coming. For hosting me for a second. <laughs> so <laughs> take care and best of luck finishing things up. I hope that, um, I know you're all, you'll all make it to the finish line. And I think we all deserve huge congratulations for continuing our work in this pandemic, right? So congratulations to you. And um, my, I'll just end with my favorite quote. There's a, the woman who won the Nobel Prize for Literature earlier this fall was talking about how hard it was to be creating art in the pandemic and her struggles and how she started to do more writing as the summer went on. And she said, the hope is about the pandemic. The hope is that when you make it, that you'll make it through and there will be art on the other side. So I love that image. There will be art on the other side. Hang in there. All right, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so um, where were we, uh, Faith? Um, you don't really need to read these words. Um, this is meant for a different purpose, but it just mm -hmm. identifies a little bit more thoroughly what this class is about and what the art is about. So I was very impressed too, having not seen any of your work. And then all of a sudden being greeted with 23 images that were just really out of sight just really wonderful and so diversified, so different one from the next. And you can see that that creative element was very important to all of you. So shall we start with sure. this? Let's start with the first one. William, you're up. Do you remember what the assignment was? You do, I'm sure, I know you do. Uh. It was to overlay the two images and like make a new one. <laughs> <laughs> Technically, yes, uh, but to create something that would uh, uh, create a new viewing experience when the two when the two photographs are sort of combined, right? Yeah. Um, so you want to tell us a little bit about um, maybe why you chose um, these these two objects, since you could have chosen anything. Um, sort of around the household and how you sort of got them uh, integrated together as one? Um, well, I took I took a picture of the inside of the fridge. Uh, no, that's the inside of a fridge. And I took that because it had a lot of, like, you know, there was a lot of colors in there and a lot of, t like, different things. Um, and then 
I looked and I had a picture of just like it was just outside. It was of the air conditioning unit of my house. And I put them together because the air conditioning is like it keeps everyone in the house cold and then the fridge is also cold. Um which is mm-hmm. kind of silly, but you know, it just made sense to me, I guess. And I just I looked and I saw that the AC unit was kind of square or rectangle shaped. So I'm like, I bet I could fit this in really nicely. And it looks at, it makes it look kind of like a mini fridge. Um, and that's, that's basically it. I don't know what else to say that's about okay. it. But. So the, the thought pattern, marrying those two opposites together. Yeah. That was great. It's my two favorite things. My two favorite appliances, the air conditioning. <laughs> and and being cool. <laughs> yes. So the assignment was related to a sort of like a, a three or four week uh, overarching assignment based on surrealism. And surrealists, mm-hmm. of course, were very much about juxtaposing um, unusual objects together in such a way that it would sort of seamlessly become as one reality. Uh, like in the sort of the dream inspiration that sort of uh, help sort of uh, begin that sort of way of thinking about things. So we looked at some artists' work, and I thought this was a a, a great assimilation of just the technique, the thinking, and the, the final product. You you can barely see that it's it's two images. It sort of reads as one. Hi, David. <laughs> Do you remember what uh, this one was about? This one, this one was when we were doing the the reflections. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, so I knew right when we got the assignment. Um, I didn't know what things I was going to use. Um, I obviously knew we were going to use like mirrors and stuff like that. Um, but I knew I wanted to have two mirrors. Um, on side of each other because I know like whenever you're in a fun house or maybe at a like a store buying clothes and you see a bunch of mirrors that are close and you can see a mirror inside a mirror you get this effect of like like a bunch of like you can keep seeing the reflection over and over and over again so I knew I wanted that effect um, and it took me a couple different tries to get this shot exactly the way I wanted it because I kept getting like objects in the view that I didn't want in the view, like the rest of the room or anything like that. So I really wanted to focus um, on the the image in this case, which is the the doll, and then just have it be reflected over and over and over again and kind of like go on into infinity. Um, And as far as the the coloring, uh, when I got into the Lightroom, I was just messing around with the colors and shades and that one I just, I don't know, it, it seemed like it fit because it was this nice like tint and but you can still see the vibrance in the in the dress, which is also cool. Um but yeah, it was just I knew I wanted that that you know, it's the image and then you can see it reflected a bunch as you go back and it kind of goes off into um oblivion there. It looks really cool. I love the way that purple pops. Yeah. It really, really makes a statement. And, and it's so different from everything surrounding it with all those muted tones. Great. Let's um, look at this next one. Um, this was, again, um, the same project with the reflection. Um, and that is, I was lucky enough to find an old. Um, I'm going to call it a mirror, but I don't exactly know what it was part of. Um, but it was, it wasn't like a house mirror or anything like that, which I used for the other photos. Um, this was just like an old crappy, it had a bunch of scratches on it. Um, so I took it outside and put it on the ground and got the reflection of the top of the trees amongst, um, the, the grass that was on the, on like in the yard, yeah, in the yard, um, And again, the color, I knew I wanted it to be, you know, not, not, it's just basic color. And I think that tints really 
like has a lot of contrast between the darkness of the leaves and the in the in the mirror opposed to like the sky and, and the rest of it um and i don't know i just thought it looked really cool <laughs> yeah i sort of i i had uh, noted this one really in some ways because the uh the the difference between the internal sort of um I don't know, it's a trapezoid now or something, uh, and the sort of blurry, uh, sort of vague outside. But this, the sharpness um, is really apparent. And it's not, you know, photographs aren't usually, you know, the quality is only based on sharpness, but this shows an incredible sharpness, but surrounded by this softness. And it's at, but it's at the same plane uh, to the viewer. And in that internal sort of mirror space, we have this, soft sky with the sort of stained, um, you know, um, uh, dusty sort of mirror look. And this is, is just full of contrasts. Um, and I thought, you know, bringing the, uh, the above world into the down view is also, you know, super interesting. Yeah, it's very, very unique. So you're using materials that are so opposite each other. So you've got the soft grass and then you have the hard edge mirror, but yet it's not hard edge because of the softness in the center and the reflection of the sky. And then the reflection of something totally different, all those branches and then the colors are very unique. They almost look like sepia tones. Yes, and it has a sort of otherworldly, different time, any mm -hmm. sort. Yeah. Um, this one was with the uh, the shadows, um, and it was overlaid um, a like a brick like that background color or background image is um, literally a very very close up photo of a brick that is part of a chimney, and then the overlaying image was when we were taking photos of shadows and then I edited it in Lightroom to get that kind of like red um, tint to it. Um, I, I, I just when I when I overlaid it over the the brick I just thought it really worked because um, the brick and the the red were a similar color um, and I just like the the sharpness of the shadow compared to the uh, you know you get that nice texture of the brick and then you get that nice red color kind of like splashed over the rest of it um and it just it looked really cool um and it was very interesting to take that photo because i had to make it dark enough where i could get a good view of the shadow and then have like one kind of bright light source which ended up being my phone um and i was kind of foolish because i didn't use a tripod so i had to hold my phone with one hand and the camera with the other hand and try to take that picture and not shake, which was the hardest part. <laughs> yeah, the use of the background is, is interesting too because immediately, you know, I've been focusing on the shapes of the, you know, the shadow and then looking back at the cause of the shadow in the bottom right. Um, when you mentioned that, the texture, I have to sort of pull myself, separate myself back from being locked onto this very powerful and specific sort of shape and sort of um, go back to see what's really on another surface, um, but it's simultaneous, right? The, the background surface. So I think you're very successful with this. Um, this one was, um, I had an image, um, from another, a famous, uh, painter and I kind of tried to like recreate it a little bit. Um, and he basically had a, a setting of like, kind of like a landscape, um, but had these images or figures that were kind of throughout the, um, 
the landscape. Um, so what I did is I took um, a picture of that night. Like it was when it snowed earlier this year. Um, I think it was in October, maybe. I don't remember. Um, and then I, I placed other images in there. And it was really the first time I really like tried to, to actually make um, when inserting photos from Photoshop um, to really try to make look like they belong, um, which was the shadow and adding the shadows, I think really like it makes it look less. I mean, if you look at it enough, you clearly can see that those images don't belong, but the shadows help in make them seem like they're supposed to be there, um, which it was very difficult to learn how to, how to do that without having any prior knowledge of Photoshop, but um, I ended up getting it and I thought it looked pretty, pretty good. Um, also, it's got this nice tone. Um, all the colors are kind of like going together in the same kind of scheme. Um, but I just thought um, all these objects don't really relate to another, but they're going in the same photo. So they're gonna, they're gonna have fun together. <laughs> so I thought it was really unique. The shadow reminds me of a bridge a bridge between realism and surrealism. And then that hot pink, um, and it's, the hot pink is pretty much centered, just slightly off center. And it just really, your eye is drawn to that instantly. Yes, yeah, the sort of the fusion of um, different realities um, was sort of, you know, what the assignment, um, needed to um, to have to, in order to be successful in this sort of combining that sort of surrealist thing. And uh, Will did such a great job uh, working with the shadows because of that shadow is like in teaching drawing classes, you know, students that might be able to draw like a wonderful shape object, but those shapes really don't have much meaning until the shadows are sort of um, lay down and then there's a solidity and a, an acceptance of that reality as soon as and it's amazing what shadows will do to to a drawing and in this case to a photograph so it's that same sort of application of a sort of drawing painting sensibility with with uh, photography and of course the surrealists were very much interested in collage as well and this has that same sort of feel to it as well That's one of my favorite ones, Will, just to let you know. Okay, so, Allison. Hello. Um, so this is a photo that I took at Stanley Park, actually. And I just thought that it was, I, I, just, I don't know, I just really liked the curve that went with, like, I don't even think when I took this that I was looking for that curve, I'm really not sure, I don't remember. Because there's some shadows in it too. But I think I was looking for like lines and stuff like that and like curved lines. And I just thought that it was like so pretty and there's so many lines in it because like the bricks just like have their lines of their own. And I really like, I don't know, I just really like this photo and like the leaves on like the ground kind of like really like kind of gave it a little bit more of a fall vibe too, so. I sort of like how they sweep from the bottom of the frame and just sort of curve up towards the top and then they just sort of like, just swoop right over. So you get this sort of dynamic uh, curve going on. It sort of pulls you through every part of it, almost like brick by brick. Uh, and then of course, uh, the perspective sort of like adds to that sort of uh, concentration of lines towards the top left. Um, I thought this was a very, simple but super effective way to show the impact of lines on, on how you look at things. And the repetition of these lines shows um, another dynamic too. So you've got it repeating over and over, creating a rhythm. Very nice. Thank you. Um, so this photo I took in we went up, it was when we were still in person. Um, we went up to an art room and I found this like sink area that had like the, obviously you can like tell it's like a metal kind of um, like the uh, 
bottom like where the paintbrush and everything is is on a metal and it's like all scratched up so I thought that looked would like look cool like edited and everything and um we were looking for shadows in this and um I don't know I just really liked this photo and um let's see what else I mean say that's I I mean I edited this one quite a bit but um it came out really nice I think The setup, you know, when I saw you in the sink doing this, I thought, oh, that's really interesting. And I, you know, I could tell that the stainless steel texture would somehow uh, reveal itself in a black and white photograph. But what I didn't realize at that time um, until looking at it much later is how it looks like a, a theater set. It looks like a space. Um, and this is like a stage where these two sort of objects are placed and the lighting is just fantastic to catch that rim lighting on the back of that brush um, to fully um, define it against an otherwise black background is, it's amazing. I think, you know, and this is one of the first ones we did, if not, you know, the first week of being live in person. Um, yeah, and that even the light wash of lights on the back back wall sort of give it a uh, you know, nice depth and a depth with different textures too. And I think the use of black and white plays up that idea of shading and shadowing. And the shadows are different. They, they go from one spot to the next in very different ways, which makes it very interesting. Huh. This one, um, this one we were working with um, surrealist paintings and I found a painting that like had two, um, it was like a, it was basically like what that is where it's like scissors with like bodies at the end, basically like doing the same thing that I'm doing, but it was a painting, it was less realistic. Um, this was like to, this was to kind of go along with the surrealist kind of thing and then kind of bringing it into like a real kind of like thing because obviously like everything in it is like real photos and real, like I'm, I'm a real person um, instead of it just being a painting. Um, but this one was very interesting and like a lot more work than some of the other ones because I really had to like work to blend like my body with the scissors and then I had to work to um, create the right shadows with the um, with the papers and I also darkened the shadows too just to make it more like have shadows um, but I also had to like roll up papers and stuff like that so then they'd be all like curly and everything um, but then yeah I mean it was a it was a fun photo to make. It was really fun. And you got such a serious expression there. <laughs> yeah, I know. I didn't realize it was that serious when I took it. I was just like, now looking back, I'm like, whoa. But the thing, like the picture had like the original image had seriousness to it. So I was just yeah. like, I guess it'd just be serious too. <laughs> and you did such a good job. Um, one of the things that we were, technical things that we were looking for here was like sort of, blending you know, one object into another to create that sort of seamless painterly sort of feel where you get these sort of gradations of one thing evenly going to the other. And so to put yourself sort of to blend into the uh, you know, metal scissors, um, I think you did such a good job. And with, with the lighting on the papers, and I, as I recall the, um, the image that you based this on also had sort of a similar feel of sort of back or overhead lighting. Um, mm -hmm. Did a very good job with bringing all those aspects together and still sort of making it, and still bringing, you know, uh, presenting your own take on this because it was a little bit different from the original. So <clears throat> you really had fun with your value tones when you look at that, look at the scissor shape. And um, I think that it's like it's playing a trick on you because then you notice it's not just, it's not a scissors, it's this body form, but yet it's so convincing. It's so sharp edged and convincing 
that um, you kind of go back and forth between the two and it comes off as a surrealistic image. And then of course that background, that hint of color, those purple, blue tones, gray tones, yellows, very nice. Otherwise, if you didn't have that kind of background, you would miss so much. Yeah. And that's your own background, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't even take that photo for this specifically. I literally, because like the weekend before we had to do this, it was all like dark out and like there was no sun and nothing, but that one I found, so it was good. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Um, Jacob's not here, but this is the, I think the same assignment. Um, we were sort of, you know, blending. And I think that his blend was to take this uh, sort of semi-architectural um, site and then blend it with a rock, which might've been from Stanley Park too. I'm not sure. Um, it's a popular destination for photography class. Uh, but he also wanted to um, sort of play with the possibilities of how reflections would work. So most of the assignments sort of built on some aspect of a previous one or related to the next one. And in this case, um, we spoke about trying to, if you're gonna harvest something over water, then there's gonna be some, uh, some sort of reflection or tonal shift. And this was something that he sort of played with. And so for many of us, this was like an introduction to Photoshop as well. And he sort of played with gradations of, so he was, got into, a, there were many layers because I saw him produce this and he really worked to try to connect the colors <clears throat> and the tonal shifts with, with the background and, and the water too. And that high contrast is really convincing. So you have that very bright light right in the center, um, the yellow image then everything fades away, but everything's monumental at the same time. Yes, um, and, and what I did like about this, and Alison mentioned it, that you know, we used all of our, our own photographs. We never relied on cutting and pasting from everyone. Even if there was something that could be cut and pasted, it was pretty much our responsibility to produce and uh, um, be uh, uh, original. Um, and authentic in, in all levels of the production. This is um, maybe from assignment before and after. Um, this was something that he, he had worked on at home. And again, it was that idea of placing objects in spaces where they may or may, where they probably don't belong. And I think he sort of pushed it a little bit further by creating almost the opposite effect of the, you know, the cigarette, the lit cigarette tip, which is just smoking um, and sort of um, becoming dust. And here he's sort of pushed it the other way where it becomes something sort of fresh, new and, and uh, vibrant. It's almost like a born again image. <laughs> Yeah. Um, this one, I'm pretty sure this was probably from our reflections project, but it could, I think he got very much into, you know, bringing in images, but it does maybe, um, um, but he does bring in um, sort of combine uh, the, uh, the, the warmth of colors and does a good job again, sort of making these things um, appear as, uh, as one. And I think that that was one of the sort of technical goals to be able to work with the layers and the color palettes and, and do those things um, and have, again, these, uh, these unusual objects put together in this case to work very well as one sort of single reading. This one looks like it was from our uh, reflection 
um, assignment. And I think I'm just going to zoom in because it's really, there's a lot going on here. Uh, so many different layers and levels. And, you know, every time I look at it, there's always something new to find, whether it's in the inside of that rectangle or on the outside or the, or the frame itself. Very complex. I thought this was a, a great um, an, an interesting way to think about shadows, to think about shadows as we normally we think of shadows as the darkness that goes across something that's light. And in this case, it's the majority of the image, but we have light sort of coming through. So it could have almost been like the light, but it's the, you know, that's, that's the focus. Um, but that is the yin and yang of the, of, Photography right? it's always about light and dark, no matter how you want to, to look at it. That's what we've got going on. And this was just beautiful um, little focus on a corner. I think it might have been the edge of the restroom or something or a classroom, but just the way that the light hit and sort of spread out softly and uh, that little shaft of light on the floor, I think it was so well done. We had also, uh, uh, looking at Michael's photograph, we had also uh, looked at some some places on campus. I encourage students to walk around and, and see what's available and take note of what's in front of them. And this was a project based on lines. So the focus was on like how lines sort of connect to each other, how lines lead and um, present an image essentially even if you're not thinking about it, they are, they are there. I don't know campus that well, but this is from, I think a major new building. Uh, I'm not sure which one. Does anyone know the name? Would it be the science building? It's, I think it's University Hall. Oh, oh, okay, residence. Anyway, I thought it was interesting just the way the lines and the shadow, that diagonal shadow sort of breaks up the, um, the composition even further. And this is um, Odette. Odette just joined us. Odette, you there? Um, yeah, I'm here. Okay. Um, so I selected this as one of your works to put into the slideshow. Do you want to say something about this one? Um, so... I was having some difficulties because that day was super, super cold and I didn't want to go walk around campus. So I was trying to look for things in my apartment because I live in an apartment complex, things in my apartment that, you know, I can do to like, you know, show reflections. And um, I kind of was like looking at the sink um, and I was just like, oh, like I could do like a water reflection. So I just put water in a bowl and, you know, I edit it to my to the best of my abilities so you can see it as so you can see the reflection clearly i like that one just because it was so um i sort of get a sense of what it was whether it's is a cup or a bowl but there was something very immediate about it um something very direct and it was a view that uh very familiar with you know, when you look down at your cup, whatever you're drinking, um, but it's not often that you really pay attention to what it is that you're about to consume or that aspect of uh, the liquid, because it's usually like a practical, uh, you know, it's there for utility. I'm going to do something with this water and that's the sort of the functioning. And then to sort of step back and be able to sort of see that as uh, a place where an image exists, um, I thought was great. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, Shams um, did some work again with reflections and then we started to, this was a transitionary sort of uh, project where we combined different textures. And so the goal was to sort of connect one object with another and to show the sort of translucent, translucent nature of 
these two images. And I just thought it was interesting because she sort of picked up on this um, very defining uh, shape of, you know, dogs, uh, head, ears here, um, just enough to give us the, the recognition that we need um, to sort of identify it against this um, sort of random looking pattern. So the pattern really plays a role. Um, it's so different from the shadow and the sharp edge of the image that we see, but it's got that repetition, it's got softness and it's very complex. Right. Uh, this again is from Shams. Um, multi-layering um, and I thought this was uh, we started talking about surrealism and then with the with the layering and then somehow there's something about you know that having the time uh, indicated in the image that sort of seemed like um, could have been a dream that you could sort of like paying attention to the time where time is sort of moving and with that sort of circular um, background uh, with the shells sort of uh, surrounding the alarm clock. It just has a very dreamy, sort of surreal feel to it. Um, this is uh, Tess's uh, image. This was part of, uh, you'd seen the application earlier with Sham's work where two images were combined. This is where uh, she eventually would use this for a combination image, but as it stood just by itself, I thought this was uh, an amazing sort of uh, capture of what, what happens in certain places uh, and, and the sort of uh, graphic uh, and sort of verbal expression of uh, a whole range of people. And then the more you look at it, you see just different uh, different inputs from different people at different times and the gradation from sort of light to dark um, and the use of lines, I thought it was just beautiful. This is also from the uh, project to do with lines. So the lines can exist in sort of graphic form, but also as in this case, sort of horizon and the breakup of space as we look at it. And photography is a great way for us to see how space is created um, because we're looking at it sort of in a, the real world in a flat way. Um, and so it allows us to almost abstract by default of that process. And this is where you can see the sort of beginnings of that. And this again is a beautiful, simple, um, constructed image where you know we get to focus um, on these three critical lines, but suspended between these sort of two realms of the water and the sky, which are of course related visually because the water reflects the sky always. Um, and the, I just thought this is very striking just to have these three things just floating there with that sort of uh, recognizable sort of background with houses and the headlands and uh, horizon. I just thought it's just great combination. I think that's it. Um, I do have some of Brian's because Brian is here. Um, sure, let's look at that. Okay, I just need to switch the screen then. Uh, let's bring one of his up. One second. Um, I'll bring them both. There's a couple of his actually. Okay, let's go to. So, Brian, get ready. I'm just about to share a mystery image with you. There we go. How about this one? No one's seen this one. I just saw it today for the first time. So, you want to say something about this, Brian? I like this one a lot. Uh, 
Yeah, so this was from our most uh, recent project. We were sort of uh, playing with still lifes and texture and lighting. Uh, and I chose a couple of cloves of garlic to do. Uh, down here on my uh, basement, I have like a green screen, a little lamp. So I just sort of use those to sort of get multiple angles and shots and lighting. And uh, this was sort of one of the results of that. Um, I like this one in particular because you shot it from sort of eye, uh, eye level, but from its level, like you shot straight across it rather than looking down. Some of the other shots you had were looking down at it. And this one gives it a different sort of um, significance uh, when you're looking straight at something as opposed to looking down on something. And uh, the fact that you had balanced it on an onion or another uh, garlic um, sort of um, made it almost, made it seem a bit more human somehow. There was something more relatable by looking at it this way rather than another way, the other, another angle. And the softness of those value tones are incredible. <clears throat> and then you've got that linear quality running through, <clears throat> but they're, it's just very effective. Yes, yes, it is. Um, and I'm going to, let's see, let's bring in another one. Uh, Brian, you want to say something about this? Yeah, so this was when we were doing reflections when we were in person. Um, we were going around campus or around the building and just seeing what we can find for reflections. And I wasn't having too much luck, to be honest. Uh, but so I decided to try my luck on the tinted window or the blue window. And I <laughs> sort of just in the spur of the moment, just raised like a little peace sign or a hand sign and uh, actually came out pretty good with all the lighting and yeah. <laughs> I've liked this one, you know, when you did it, um, partly because there's the frame, um, but mainly because there's something so ordinary about the, the symbol that you make, but somehow here it doesn't seem like it sort of belongs somehow, it's sort of, connects to what looks like a sort of landscape setting inside the blue, where it's almost sort of coming out of this mist. Um, suddenly there's this sort of rabbit head, you know, finger gesture thing. Um, I just thought it's sort of funny. Um, and, and yet it's sort of, it, cause it doesn't belong yet. Somehow it belongs as well by the fact that it's a reflection. And let's do one of these ones. This is the last one from Brian, which I just saw today too. Uh, you want to say what this? Um... Yeah, so uh, this is my sister. Um, <laughs> I needed uh, someone to do the uh, project with, this project where we're taking different perspectives and then sort of creating an image with those different perspectives. And my sister has a natural serious resting face so I decided to uh, use that and uh, I think it came out pretty funny I, I liked it a lot she didn't as much but I liked it <laughs> right so our goal here was to uh, you know we had looked at the work of uh, David Hockney and his sort of multiple collage uh, photographs that were based on sort of a cubist approach. And um, I think it gives a lot of opportunity to sort of revisit and re uh, reimagine the things that sort of in front of us. And, you know, the more I look at this, the more connections I see, the more, you know, I see how Brian has sort of thought about how it gets viewed from and gives us different ways, which is the, 
different ways to look at it, which was the sort of the objective, different ways to look at it, but at the same time, we're seeing one whole sort of, uh, sort of unified um, image presented, a familiar image that is. Okay. Um, Faith, do you have anything that else that you'd like to say? Sure, I certainly do. So nice to hear all the responses. That was just amazing. And the work, just so incredible because everything is so different, even though the assignments were the same for all of you. It's just really um, nice to have this um, recorded because we wanna share it with a lot of people. And this will give us a chance to do that. Our artwork is nice on its own, but it's all the more nice when you blend it with um, a little conversation. So I thank you. Thank you, Faith. Um,